Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes. And today's tutorial is a double feature. And we're going to start with a side fan fold. Lay your shirt flat out on the table and using a washable marker and a piece of kite string, mark out your pattern. Next you want to pleat along this line, making that line as straight as possible. Once you have your line all pleated up, it's time to secure it. And for this project, I'm going to use rubber bands. You could also use kite string. It really is just a matter of preference. This project started to get really long, so I pleated down to the end and then I folded it over and secured it with rubber bands. So this tutorial is going to go into the playlist of Dharma swatches, and I've decided that doing these single colors really doesn't work very well with the incline ice dye. I'm trying to display the color splits, and when I do the inclines, the shirts just turn out all one color. So if you wanted to, and you've got the gutters, you could have kept going had this been a nice long shirt, and then you can add whatever colors you want. But for this one, this is the Marigold tutorial. The cooling rack that I have it sitting on is new from Amazon, well new to me, and I like it because it has the little legs on it, so I do have this at a very, very slight incline. I'd say it's, what, maybe an inch and a half, two inches tops, so it's very, very subtle. The only bad thing about this particular rack is clothespins don't fit inside the holes, they're too small. And I do have a link for it down below in the description box, so go ahead and check that out.
Now grab a mask and give your project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash. Now this is for good measure. The shirt's already been pre-soaked, so I don't think it's a necessary step, but you go through all the trouble of folding it, adding the dye and all of that. And we're going to be pushing so much ice through it that I figure why not just a little bit of extra soda ash just in case. I want that pH to stay up so I get nice vibrant color. It's been 24 hours after the ice has melted and now it's time for the rinse out. So you wanna start by using cold water and that's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fibers and then gradually increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. You probably wanna wear gloves. I don't know what I was thinking, but anyways. I take it to the washing machine and I do a plain hot water cycle. I do a second hot water cycle using Kirilon, which is formerly known as Synthropol. And I do a third hot water cycle using Milsoft, which brings softness back into the fabric after the dyeing process. And then I put it in the dryer and we come back and we see our results. And all of that stuff is listed down below in the description box, so don't forget to check that out. Well, here it is guys here's our marigold side fan fold after it's been washed and dried and I love this shirt I love a good side fan fold the reason why this is turning into a double feature is because if you look there's like little black specks in this shirt and I was worried that maybe something had come off the rack and since I'm swatching out the colors, I want them to be true. So I decided to make a second shirt to see if Marigold actually has a little black flex in it. And right here is the liquid swatch. So now you see what ice dye and liquid looks like. Okay, on to the next tutorial, which is a ice dye spiral. Smooth out your shirt and then decide where you want the center of your spiral to be. Give it a little pinch and then spiral it up. And if you notice, I'm actually making the spiral with my opposite hand. So I'm holding the center of it still, and then I use my other hand to pull the fabric out and around and out and around, and I just keep working it that way. I find that I'm able to get really nice pleats, and then they don't overlap each other as much. And this is just my technique. I feel like um, if the pleats are overlapping a lot, then you have inconsistent dye pattern. Once you have it all spiraled up, it's time to secure it. And I prefer to use rubber bands to secure my spirals. And these rubber bands that I got from Amazon are just perfect for spirals. They're just the right size. And like I've mentioned before, they rinse off really well so they can be reused. Um, I love these rubber bands. I like a nice tight spiral and all of the loose ends to be tucked into the rubber bands. So what I like to do is pull on that tail and tuck it into the nearest rubber band. Using a washable marker, I mark out my pattern. Now the spiral of this shirt is not dead center of this whole circle. So I decided where it would be best to split it in two and I'm just going to draw like a X on it or I guess it'd be like a cross pattern. You know, it's an ice dye so it doesn't have to be 100% perfect but these are just basic guidelines to sort of help me stay on track when I add my dye. I 
I get asked quite a bit about dye and is liquid dye versus ice dye, does one use more dye than the other? And I feel like it's apples and oranges. You know, mixing the dye, liquid dye, takes two teaspoons of dye to one cup of water, in some cases four teaspoons of dye, and in some cases eight teaspoons of dye. So I don't think I use nearly that much when I do an ice dye. So I really don't think ice dyeing uses more dye than liquid dye. What do you guys think? For those ice dyers out there who also do liquid, which one do you think uses more dye? Or are they about the same? Now it's time to add the soda ash for good measure. And notice I'm only putting it where I added the dye. There's no reason to raise the pH of the white part because I do want it to stay white or you know have some white space. But in case you forget and put it on the whole shirt, that's okay. I really like these silicone ice cube trays that I got off of Amazon. Hey, would you call them ice cubes if they're hexagon shape? Hmm. Well, anyways, when working with them, I'll tell you a little trick. If you let them sit out on the table for like, I don't know, a minute, the ice comes out a lot easier. And another thing I really like about the shape of the ice is they sort of, well, they don't lock together, but they, they fit together really nicely on the project. And so it becomes like a nice little sturdy, um, like a base, and then I can build up off of that. Um, I would say that next to my ice maker machine, these are my favorite ice cubes. It's a good idea to wear gloves when you do this. After the ice melted, I came back and I checked it. And I probably could have stopped right here, but I thought, let's just put a little bit on the back and add some more ice. So just repeat the process on the back that you did on the front. So now you wanna let it batch for 24 hours after the ice melts. So it's been 24 hours since the ice has melted and now it's time for the rinse out. And like always, you wanna start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fibers and then gradually increase the water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I do a plain hot water cycle I do a second hot water cycle using Kirillon, and I do a third hot water cycle using Millsoft to bring softness back into the fabric after the dyeing process. And in case you didn't hear me a couple minutes ago, I get all of that stuff from Dharma Trading Company, and I have links for it all down below in the description box, so don't forget to check that out. And then I put it in the dryer, and we'll come back and see our results. Well, 
Well, here it is. Here's our shirt number two, our marigold spiral. And I love this shirt. It's absolutely beautiful. The pattern is great. The color is great. Now notice, it does have some dark flecks in it. So it had nothing to do with my rack. It's what marigold does when it splits. And it's a beautiful color. It's, a, it's like a golden yellow, orangey, brownish. It's just very... I, it almost reminds me of wheat. I don't know. Maybe I would have called this wheat. But here's the liquid swatch again. So now you can see what liquid looks like and ice dye looks like. And here's a side by side of the two shirts. So I love them both, but I'm leaning towards the spiral on this one. So what do you guys think? Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.